What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Larry Chen here. I am actually at Scuderia Toro Rosa by accident. We just kind of needed a quiet industrial place. We've got the owner here and we got, what is it? I guess it is brown. It's BMW Marrakesh Brown. Anthony here built this beautiful BMW wagon. What year is this? Uh, it's a 93. It's an absolute showstopper. It was my daily driver for about three years. I've had the car like seven or eight years. I was a little bit bored of the four cylinder 1.6 petrol that was in it and I, I wanted to put a big turbo diesel engine in it. That's the thing, we already did rolling shots of this car and when you were just driving by, it sounded like a diesel truck. All my uh, friends say it sounds like a tractor. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a tractor, it's very fast and it's very good looking. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Can you explain what motor this is? BMW M51 D25, which BMW used in their E36s and E34s. They also put them in the Range Rover P38 and the Vauxhall Omegas. It's completely manually managed. There's no ECU anymore. I've already got a bigger turbo for it, but I need to make a custom manifold with one of my friends who's really good at welding, who helped me make all the downpipe and full exhaust and everything. How much power do you think you're making now? My daily driver is has got the same engine in it, and that's chipped, and that's doing 360 newton meters of torque, but only 184 brake, but I think that's plenty in, a, in an E30. Wow, it's um, so clean. I mean, the way you shaved it is unbelievable. So who actually did all of this body work? And I have a friend who used to have his own body shop. He did all the filler work in the bay and he, he pulled the rear arches out. Yeah. And I welded them back up and he, he dressed them and they look absolutely mint. It's so good. The, the paint is seriously like it's, glass. It's, it's beautiful. Exactly the same underneath and inside the wheel arches. And if you pull the carpet up, it's brown in the, under the carpet and under the headliner. It's been completely bare shell. Everything's been done on my parents' farm. Built our own paint booth. Is there anything else you want to touch on on the exterior? I've got US side markers in it. Um, wait, 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 wait. You have US side markers in it? Yeah, the, the, you don't see them on UK cars a lot. Okay. So that's funny because <laughs> you guys we put get rid European, of them all the time. We put European side markers on our cars. We could swap. <laughs> and then everybody's happy. Yeah, yeah. What about the wheels? A company called Extreme Offset, and they, they started off making um, off roading wheels for like Land Rovers and Jeeps and Vitaras and anything you want. And you tell them what width you want, what size you want, what offset you want what centre ball you want, what stud pattern you want, and they say, right, we'll get some wheels for you, and it might be like a three-month wait. They keep you updated on like when everything's coming, everything. They, I've rebuilt all the headlights and fog lights and everything myself, um, re-glassed them, fit the crosshair kits, cleaned them up, paint the backs of them and stuff, like made them like new. When people smoke the lights, they really like to like do both sets. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll smoke the reflector in the back of there and paint it all black, but I quite like having a dark inside one and a a light outside one, it's a bit different. It's got the aircon spec Valance on it with the two openings. Tell me about the air suspension. It's a full V2 system from airlift with the tank, the two compressors and everything, and all the manifold and everything is hidden under the boot build. While the outside looks great, the interior is what really set this car off. Oh, unbelievable. Let's start with the steering wheel. One of my friends found it in a big group box of steering wheels that he'd bought. It ties in with the uh, wooden gear knob and the... Yeah, where did you get that knob one. from? European eBay. I think it's off a Polish seller and they, they make like a few gear knobs a month and put them up. The interior is pristine. How did you get it so clean? Managed to get a crack free dash out of a car that we broke for bits. These Recaros are amazing. Like, what is this material? The website listed it as a a Yorkshire tweed, like from a Yorkshire mill, it was manufactured in Yorkshire, which is where I'm from. And I was absolutely in love with the pattern and I already had the wheel and I'd already chose my paint colour and I was like, that will look really good. Everything on the car has been touched, like all the little, little latches, I've had them re-zinc coated. Um, and the check straps for the doors and like little stainless nuts and bolts everywhere. This was built in, on a farm, which is so cool. That's like the most English thing ever, right? Let's check out the boot. I love how clean this is. I've got all the air ride management under there and like spares and stuff like that. And I can still get my spare wheel in and out, which I love. I just tilt the seats forward and this lifts out. It's all held together with Velcro. 
grills and the adjusters and a couple of bits on my seat are designed and 3D printed. That looks great. That actually looks OEM. I was going to ask you. You can't, you can't get them anymore. I tried really hard. I got a cheap Chinese 3D printer and like drew some up and I'm going to make my own. Well, it's kind of crazy because these are the things that are the first thing to get damaged in a car because you store stuff back there. You look right on eBay at all the second-hand ones and they've all been smashed in. They're all curved and like squashed. On the airlift shocks, they've got the, all the dampening settings, but you can't get to any of this in the touring because it's all way below there. So I got some BC extension pieces modified the ends of them to fit over the top of the airlift struts and managed to route them up and out and managed to put the knobs on and made some little surrounds for them so I can adjust my dampening without taking any of my interior out now. Oh yeah, one of the things I didn't show was, I guess up here would normally be like a diagnostic area, right? Yeah, there's like a, an OEM like readout panel there so I thought I'm going to put my, my air ride controller up there, hide it basically and it, it fits quite well. I'm happy with it. Well, thank you so much for showing us your car. It is so cool. Looking forward to seeing what else you're going to build next at your farm. I have no idea at the minute. I <laughs> <laughs> would love to do another E30. Do you think you can start it up and give it a, a couple revs? Yeah, yeah. I just want to hear it. <laughs> Another little cool thing, that little voltmeter there that my, uh, my friend made and gave to me. It's made from a recycled hazard switch. I think that's one of my favorite bits. <laughs> it's the little things. Let's hear it from the front. That is a wrap. We're tired, we're gonna go to sleep. See you guys later. It sounds like a pickup truck. Honestly, if you blindfolded me and told me we were following an FT50, I wouldn't believe you.